Okay, this is part three in my series on time series forecasting. And in the first two videos, we progressively moved through several common stationary forecasting models to try to arrive at the best forecasting model. We did that by minimizing this error measure, mean squared error. What we didn't do was evaluate whether or not our forecast is better than just taking a guess. And the most obvious guess that people take is to forecast that the next period out will be what it is at the end of this current period. This is called a naive forecast, and uh, I discuss it a little bit more in part two of this series. So there's a statistic we can use to evaluate whether our model is better than a naive forecast, and it's called Teal's U. It's pretty complex to calculate, and unfortunately Excel does not have a built-in function for this, so we're gonna calculate it manually. It is easy to interpret, though, once we have it. All right, so when we have Teal's U values of of less than one, that indicates that the forecasting model is better than naive. If you have teals U greater than one, it indicates that the forecasting method is worse than naive, and so then you're better off uh, to just use the naive forecasting method. And then if, there, if it's equal to one, um, that would indicate that, well, your forecasting model is the same as a naive forecast. All right, so the way we calculate it is as this ratio of the sum of the squared errors between the forecasting model and uh, naive forecasting. I'm going to go ahead and start calculating the first component. So it's the difference between the forecast and the actual over the actual from the previous period. All right, and we're going to square that. And the reason they square that is to sort of penalize uh, larger errors. Okay, we're going to do the same for the actual versus the actual. And in this case, we'll use today's versus yesterday's actuals. Okay, so we can see that in this initial calculation of the components, they're pretty close to equal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and copy that down. Once we get it copied down, I take the sums. I can just copy this across. Okay, so we can already see right here that, oh, okay, the sum of the squared errors from the forecast is smaller than the sum of the actual errors. But I have to take the square root of it up here. So I can already predict that TLSU is going to come out to be less than 1, and that's because of the value of alpha, and it's less than 1 itself. All right, so in part 2 of the series, I talk about special values of alpha being 0 and 1. And when alpha is 1, uh, that means that the forecast under the single exponential smoothing model is actually a naive forecast. Since our alpha came out to be less than 1, then I can predict with pretty high confidence that TLSU is also going to come out to be uh, less than 1 and indicate that the single exponential smoothing is better than naive forecasting. All right, but I'll go ahead and calculate it here. So I have to take the square root of this ratio of the forecast errors to the actual errors. Okay, so our teals comes out to be as predicted less than one at 0.883, and so that indicates that our single exponential smoothing model is superior to a naive forecast. So I hope that helps with teals you.